In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to set up our development environment to write code that uses the Hibernate framework. So the first thing that we need to do is to download the binaries of the Hibernate distribution. This will provide us the jar files which are required in order to you know, write code and use the framework. So we need to download the jar files and add them into our class path. To download the jar files, head over to hibernate.org slash downloads. You will have a link for the release bundles. Download the latest release bundle that you see here. Right now it's 3.6.4 final. I'll be downloading the zip file. Okay, I've downloaded and extracted this hibernate zip file into my Java folder. And uh, inside this, zip file you have the hibernate 3.jar which we need for uh, using the hibernate library and uh, along with this hibernate 3.jar there's also this lib folder the lib folder contains the jars that hibernate requires so since we're using hibernate we also have to include the dependencies of hibernate so the jars that we need essentially are the you know the ones in this required folder and we need this JPA jar, I'll talk about what JPA is later, but uh, know that this required folder and the JPA, these contain the jars that we need to include along with this Hibernate 3.jar. This is the main jar, which has all the binaries for Hibernate. Now let's open up Eclipse and uh, start a new project. Okay, I have Eclipse open here. I'll right click new project I'll select Java project we'll call this first hibernate project I'll leave everything else as a defaults and I'll say finish perspective no that's okay I want to leave the perspective as it is. Now, first thing I need to do here is to include the jar files in the class path, the ones that we have downloaded from the Hibernate website. So in order to do that, I go to properties and uh, the Java build path, the libraries tab. So I need to add, I need to create a new library and add it. I'll be creating a library because we'll be writing a lot of code with Hibernate and it's it's handy if we have a library with all the required jars bundled in it so that we don't have to worry about adding the jars each and every time we just add the library so I'll say add library and I'll select user library now I do not have any user library so I'll say new I'll call this Hibernate here make sure that you don't select the system library checkbox here should be a user library alone. Now I have the Hibernate library, now I need to add the jars. The way to do that is to click on the add jars and uh, go to our Hibernate distribution. Uh, the main jar is the Hibernate 3.jar, so I will add that first. Okay, that's done. Next, what I'll do is I'll go to the lib folder and the ones in the required, all these are the mandatory dependencies of Hibernate that we'll have to add. So I'll add all of them. Then again, add jars in the lib. There is this folder called JPA. There will be one jar inside this JPA folder. This one we need to add. We will we'll understand what JPA is a bit later. And then finally, inside the lib folder itself, there is a folder called bytecode. So I will use the Java Assist. We need to add one of these two. I will choose the Java Assist here. And uh, again, this is something that we'll look at later as to why we are adding that jar. So now we have the Hibernate library set. So I press OK. Uh, I choose this library to add to the class path. Now I have Hibernate here with all the required jars. Let me expand this. You can probably pause this video and check to make sure that you have all the jars in your Eclipse library. Now, before we start writing code here, there is another step that we need to do, which is installing the database, which is obvious. We have uh, Hibernate here, which connects to databases and we are working with databases. So 
So we need to have a database in our development environment so that we can configure Hibernate to connect to this database. Uh, there are a lot of free databases available. I don't want to talk about the steps involved in um, installing a database because in that case I would have to pick one and uh, I don't want to enforce a particular choice of a database to the people who are following this tutorial. Um, I happen to have Postgres DB installed in uh, my machine so I'll be using Postgres in uh, the examples here but this is this is not really necessary you can have any database available and uh, you can configure Hibernate to connect to that database but uh, when it comes to these examples in this tutorial I'll be using Postgres database if you want to follow along and install Postgres database you can go to the Postgres website you can just do a Google search for Postgres and uh, you'll be directed to the download section where you can download and install for free uh, my Postgres installer also came with this GUI tool that I can use to connect to the database. I have uh, set the password as password here, but uh, yeah, it's a it's a it's a database that's set up by default. I can create databases, I can run queries, and all those things using this GUI tool. This will also be handy. Uh, but then again, this is just a choice that I've made because I have used Postgres before. Uh, you're free to add. You're free to install any database of your liking and you can uh, follow along these tutorials equally fine. However, depending on the database that you choose, you will have to download the JDBC drivers for that database. So what's happening here is that while Hibernate provides a layer of abstraction when it comes to the database connections, Hibernate internally is using JDBC to connect to the database. And uh, depending on what database that uh, we're using or we are configuring Hibernate to connect to, we will have to supply Hibernate with that JDBC driver so that it can use that driver to connect to the database. So since I'm using Postgres here, I will need the Postgres JDBC driver. If you're using another database, you can download the JDBC driver for that. Uh, if you don't know how to download the driver, just uh, just doing a Google search for the driver should uh, help. For example, Postgres JDBC driver gives me the direct link. I will download the type 4 driver here so that, uh, you know, I just have to add the jar file and we are done. So I have actually downloaded the driver here already. All I need to do is add the jar to the build path again. So uh, I go to the libraries here and I say add external jar and uh, in my Java folder I've downloaded this JDBC driver so I just add this jar and say OK. Now this will help uh, the Hibernate uh, library to connect to our database. Say you want to change the Hibernate configuration to another database you will have to do two things. First thing, of course, to install the database on a particular machine. And then the second thing is to provide the, you know, the required JDBC driver for that database. We need to provide that to Hibernate so that Hibernate can connect to that database. So these are the steps that we need to do in order to um, create a project and use Hibernate. So this we are done here. We have, uh, what we have done is we have downloaded the Hibernate binaries and we have added a library into our project and we have also downloaded the JDBC driver for our database and we have added that to the project. What I did not cover in the tutorial is actually installing the database. You can pick a database of your choice and install it and uh, supply the corresponding driver to uh, hibernate by just adding that JDBC jar into your Eclipse projects build path.